In this video I want to cover a little bit about transformation of trig functions and as you can see I've graphed the sine function but I've included some sliders in Desmos to show you what happens when you substitute a scalar in front of a function, a k as part of the period for a function, and a horizontal shift, left or right that is. So we have A as the scalar in front. You can also think of it as amplitude, and then K, which is a way to calculate the period for one full, you could think of it as a rotation around the unit circle, but you could also think of it as unwound on the axes here. Um, I think that will make more sense here in a minute. And then B, which shifts it. So right now these are all set to 1. Now if I move B so that the value of B is positive in the function A sine of Kx plus Kb, you can see that positive values of B shift the sine function to the left and negative values of b shift it to the right. I'm going to set that back to zero so that it looks like a standard sine function again. I encourage you to recreate this same set of items in Desmos and try this yourself. So the next one that I have here is k. Now remember, if you want to find the period for a function, k allows you to define how much the function has shrunk horizontally or com compressed or expanded or stretched out horizontally. Now watch what happens when I make k bigger. As k gets bigger, greater than 1 and bigger, it's compressing, it's almost looking like a spring, but it's compressing the sine function. Notice that the sine function still has an equilibrium and an intersection at the origin 0, 0. But if I bring it back to 1, and then I work on observing what happens when it's between 1 and negative 1. Notice that as I get closer and closer to 0, it just expands like crazy. It stretches out horizontally way faster almost than it. And then when it goes negative, it flips it over. It's just a very interesting pattern. But as soon as I get past 1 to the left of negative 1, so now I'm at negative 1.3, notice that the period is upside down but it's shrinking again. It's compressing horizontally. Now I could stop at any time and slide the B scalar left or right, and that also affects where the period starts and stops. Now sometimes you will see on your homework or in your textbook that k, the scalar inside the function of sine of x, is factored out front, which is very, very convenient. It looks something like this. k times x plus b, and k is not part of b. That's awesome, that's helpful, but it gets very confusing to figure out how much it's been compressed or expanded horizontally. And so there's a faster way to determine the function that is being represented on a graph. If you're given a graph and you need to find the function itself, there is a faster way to do this. Here's the one caveat to this strategy that I'm going to show you. And that is this. You have to know the interval on which sine, the standard sine function without all these pieces, just sine 
cosine and tangent of x, what period they exist on. So what is the interval for one full period of sine? 0 to 2 pi for sine, 0 to 2 pi for cosine, and for tangent, let's turn tangent on here for a second. So y equals tangent of x is on an interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if you want to do some additional research on this, you can go up to the little gear in the top right corner in Desmos and change your steps for the x-axis to say pi over 2, pi divided by 2. So now you can see this really nice correlation between the radian measurements and the three basic trig functions. Now let's do an actual calculation with the function given to determine what the function is from the graph. Now this is only going to work if you've memorized the interval on which one period of the sine function exists. And in this case, it says we're supposed to look at a sinusoidal function, meaning we're going to have a sine function in there. We just have to figure out if there's a change in amplitude, shifts horizontally, compressions horizontally, and amplitude stretched vertical. So I know that it's a sine function, but I see that the equilibrium point is sitting at negative 1. And you may be wondering what the equilibrium point is. That's just where you split the sine function into a top portion and a bottom portion so that it's equally spaced above and below. So there's as much of the curve above as below for each high and low for sine. Hopefully that makes sense. Then I notice that a normal sine function should look like this, where it starts at 0, 0, increases to the point pi over 2, 1, then decreases from 1 to 0 at pi, and then decreases some more to negative 1 at pi, 3 pi over 2, and then increases again to 2 pi comma 0. So I could start by defining a sine function that starts at 0 that's been shifted over. So I could say, well, if the curve starts at pi over 2, increases, decreases, crosses, decreases, and then comes back up to 0, I would have a standard sine function between pi over 2 and 5 pi over so I'm going to write that over here, that my interval goes from pi over 2 with x in between. So the x values for which this one period of sine exists is from pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. From here, I need to get it to be from 0 to 2 pi. This gives me the standard interval. So I will have to manipulate all three parts of this tripartite inequality to get it to look like an interval from 0 to 2 pi. When that happens, the guts, the inside of the sine function, is going to morph into what will be the inside of this sine function. There's going to be some shifting, there's going to be some amplitude changes too, but it'll all just fall out nicely when we do this calculation. So I'm going to try and get this to be a zero. So I'm going to subtract pi over 2 from all three parts. And that gives me zero is less than or equal to x minus pi over 2 is less than or equal to 
4 pi over 2. If I simplify 4 pi over 2, that's equal to 2 pi. So I just, all I had to do is subtract pi over 2. So the only thing that's happened to this sine function so far is it's been shifted to the right 1 pi over 2 distance. So this, x minus pi over 2, is the new inside of my sine function. So, so far I have y equals sine of x minus pi over 2. Now I need to figure out how much the amplitude has shifted. Normally a sine function goes between a height of, a maximum height of 1 and a minimum height of negative 1. In this case, my amplitude goes from a equilibrium at negative 1 up to a maximum height of 1. That is 2 units of amplitude. And then it decreases. You want to make sure that your amplitudes are equal. So my amplitude downwards from equilibrium is also 2, and above is also 2. So my amplitude is 2, so I'm going to put a 2 scalar in front. Since it looked like it was upside down, but I just discovered it had been shifted to the right pi over 2, the only thing left is this shift downwards. So the whole function has been shifted down from the x-axis, y equals 0, one unit. And so I have to subtract 1 at the end. This is my new function right here. y equals 2 sine of x minus pi over 2 minus 1. This is what I would enter in Desmos to double check that it works, and if it works, then I would enter it into the homework system.